to begin with the introduction. Yeah. Hello everyone and greetings for the day. Thank you for joining us in this academia centric training program as renowned architects share details about how they optimize their design with glass. Today we have with us architect Anuja Savant talking about the opportunities with glass as a building material. Architect Anuja Savant is a principal architect at SSA Architects and is an alumni of Sir JJ College of Architecture, Mumbai. She is an IGBC accredited professional. Her key specialization is in residential high density and high rises and she also worked on a number of specialty hospitals and is handling a large portfolio of various mixed use development, both institutional commercial projects as well as master planning and including an award winning project overseas. So over to you architect uh, Savant to dazzle us with your presentation. Thank you, thank you so much and very warm good afternoon to you all faculty members, practicing architect, students and few of my colleagues. Um, so welcome to you all. I'm very sure all of you are at home, safe and catching up with a lot of uh, knowledge based uh, programs and trying to um, be more resourceful and trying to use the time. Um, I must congratulate Glass Academy for this excellent initiation uh, of glass as a subject because uh, as a practicing architect, uh, we are working very closely with this material, extremely versatile material. Uh, for past uh, three decades, glass is being extremely popular. And as uh, we are working largely on the high rises, uh, it becomes an inevitable material as it's, um, I would call it as a uh, skin um, of uh, our buildings. So it's very important that when we are handling such materials to understand the properties of the material, upgrade the knowledge of uh, upcoming new product because it's a technology oriented. So every time uh, we see a lot of new trends coming into the market and as a practicing architect, as I mentioned, uh, we have to upgrade ourselves and uh, keep with the current trends. So it's very important that uh, upcoming younger generation should understand its implementation to understand uh, how these are manufactured, what are new upcoming uh, materials coming into the market, uh, what are the pros and cons of that material and uh, when we are applying, when we are constructing and actual execution is ongoing, uh, how to use this material um, after understanding all the positive and negative aspects of it. So today I'm just going to share my experiences and uh, the overall bit of the history. So, so it's going to be a blend of the history, um, then it was industrial revolution and how glass has emerged uh, now as a material. And uh, typically you can see that a lot of new trends coming into the market, um, the old fashioned trends come back, but they are wrapped into a slightly different uh, motives and patterns. So, design wise how to use them i'm going to share one or two my project and uh, take you through this whole journey and trying my little bit of making you aware of glass as a building material i would say that today's discussion is going to be uh, more uh, opening uh, some sort of uh, avenue for you uh, definitely that is going to cause a lot of questions in your mind uh, i'll try to resolve as much as i can uh, but many of the researches are available on internet. You can make a use of them. You can connect with me and uh, so much you can keep updating yourself and as much you update, uh, I think more and more knowledge is available. A lot of vendors are available who are ready to give you that kind of a knowledge. So uh, let's begin with my presentation today. So I'm calling this uh, my today's presentation as uh, Okay, so um, 
I'm going to start with my presentation and uh, today's topic I'm calling it as a clear solution. Uh, indeed, it's a clear solution. Uh, what glass is all about is a clarity, reflection and the transparency. And that's where it's a clear cut solution for the high rises. It's a clear cut solution for uh, uh, new age, new generation, as I mentioned in the beginning. So where it all begins, so I'm going to take you through a through bit of a history, but let me first take you through the index. So first I'm going to a little bit talk about the evolution of a glass over time. How was a history, a uh, bit of it, not much on the history part of it, but it's very interesting to go back to the history days and understand that uh, from where we all started this journey of this fantastic material, how versatile it was and how it was used in the past. Of course, we all studied in the academy days, but uh, it was very interesting for me also to revisit those days and uh, just go back to uh, my history lectures. Then how it has evolved over the time. So uh, creation of the glass on the edge. I'm going to talk about the type of a glass, properties of the glass and the pros and cons of the glass. Uh, how implementation as a clear solution, which I have titled, uh, how the progression of a glass has happened, how the application and the detail, which is very much important part of uh, um, the professional use or in the construction industry use and their, uh, the kind of experiences I have over the period of time, which I'm going to share with you. And a little bit going to talk about the future of glass too. So this is what the overall overview of today's presentation. So let me begin with the history uh, and the realizing the vision of the glass. So when we did the rhine of the architectural glass really started and how did architects from a distance uh, eons throughout the history fall in love with it? I, I would really call this as a romancing with the glass. So uh, realizing the vision of a world inspired by glass. So glass has been an inseparable part of the architecture for a very long time and it includes different type of architectural glass design and its installments. So uh, if you look at it in the history, uh, what I found that it was more used as an ornamental, more to add a lot of color, texture, the stories. And uh, if you look at them, it was more like a filtering light through the buildings or the churches. Um, and various uh, maybe uh, gathering places. So, so it was more adding a very ornamental element into them. It all started in 3500 BC where the archeological evidence shows that the first glass was made in Egypt and the Eastern Mesopotamia. Uh, there were small artifacts like amulets and the pearls which were made with the clay molds. Uh, in this period, first manuals on the glass manufacturing processes appear uh, in 650 BC. Uh, in 1500 BC, the first glass vessels appear uh, and in 100 BC, the Sirius invented the blowpipe, uh, revolu uh, revolutionizing the glass manufacturing process and making it more and more easier and faster and cheaper. After that, the glass production started uh, in the Roman Empire. So, so you could see these elements where uh, the glass was introduced in the historic period. What happened in the 8th century? 8th century, what you could see that the Venice receives the craftsman fleeing from the Constantinople and becomes a great European glass making center. Throughout Europe, the art of making stained glass windows in churches and cathedrals has a widespread. And when we go to all these European places, it's a splendid uh, uh, places where we go. And it's mesmerizing experience to see all these uh, uh, glass, stained glass um, details into all those churches. Uh, in AD 100, what you could see the Roman began to use of glass for the architectural purposes after discovering the technique of the flat and transparent glass. The molten glass windows, although poor in the optical quality, began to appear in the most of the important places in the room. A cheap technique of production of a flat glass, blown glass, or the furnace rotation resulted in a circular glass plate finer at the tips and the thick center. The thickest part was used to make the chip of windows and the thinnest were observed as expensive windows. So that was a trend and the costing was decided based upon the thickness of the glass. At the same time, the Romans also invented the mirrors. 
16th century where the manufacturers of glass extend in the France, England and Germany and various techniques were perfected. A larger flat panels with a smoother and more homogeneous surfaces were formed. You can see those evidences in palaces and the Garden of Versailles are the greatest exponent in which the glass was used and glass used in the manufacture of fine tableware during the 17th century. With the founding of the British plate glass company, England became the world's center of the window glass and for the first time in the history, window glass is accessible to the large part of the population. In the 19th century, the industrial revolution uh, in the glass, their iron and glass were blended together and had become a great novelty of the modern architecture. And that's where in 1851, we could see the Crystal Palace was built entirely with these two materials. And that's where I think the engineers and architects bought real revolution, where when you go and visit, you can see that it's a true romance of a glass and the steel or the iron was done in the 19th century. Once we come to the 20th century, in 1950, the float glass was created by the British Alstair Pilkington. And you could see that the Walter Gropius and the Mies van der Rohe using them more into the straight lines and uh, creating a different kind of an impact with this material and gaining a lot of transparency um, into the architecture. In 21st century, the glass industry has become a global industry as a patent of the Pilkington process uh, expired and the cost have a glass factory were drastically reduced and today we can find them around the world. So, so this was the revolution age where the glass had become a very popular material. Let's see what happened in India. Uh, in India, the development of a glass technology in South Asia may have begun in 1730. Uh, evidence of this culture includes the red blown, brown glass bead along with the uh, uh, beads of dating to this period and making it earliest attested glass from the Indus Valley. Uh, so we could see those evidences in 600 and 300 BC. Since prehistoric period, people of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa through the trade and the contacts with the ancient summer fusion glass, etc. Uh, Firuzabad is a glass city of India and started the production of a glass back in 17th century. And uh, the research says that the first glass plant was set up in August 1908 by Lokmanya Balganga the Tilak somewhere in Tarigao. So this was something which I found in the research. I uh, very interesting fact. So what happened in the Indian context? If you'll see that uh, in Mysore Palace, you can extensively see the use of a stained glass, which has been done, and you can see more Indianized uh, motives of the flowers uh, ornamentation seen in the Mysore Palace. Whereas uh, in Mysore Palace, there is a complete uh, hall of mirror. Uh, so you can see a lot of uh, bing happening uh, in the Indian context. And uh, City Palace of Udaipur completed in the 16th century or the Shish Mahal are a few of the examples where the architecture is the mirror of life. That's where, uh, uh, where the history uh, ends. And we begin with the new era. Now I'm going to take you through uh, the kind of a glass or the ty type of the glass. So from the history, we'll come to the reality that the kind of a glass uh, which is available in the market or let's understand this material uh, more closely that uh, what are what all the uh, availability of material and how to use them. So type of a glass, uh, I, I'm really going to take this quickly because all this information is available on the net and uh, we can all uh, gather this information and this presentation I can share with all of you. So anil glass is a clear glass, tinted glass or the frost glass. Anil glass is formed uh, from the annealing stage of the float process. So the molten glass is allowed to cool and in a controlled way until it reaches to room temperature and uh, reliving any internal traces in the glass. Anil glass is used as a base product. So it's, it's a basic glass and anil glass tends to break with the longer or the uh, jack shards which can cause a significant injury. Now process glass are the laminated glass, tempered glass and the fire resistant glass, smart glass, retrofitting glass. So process glass is made by subjecting anil or the float glass to thermal or the chemical treatment in order to change its property. 
So various techniques are available in the market by which the brittle nature of a glass is modified and, and it is made as a very strong or a material which, which has a um, strength into it. And uh, because of the height or the wind pressure, it is very important that that material can become a structural material where, where you can utilize them in the adverse condition. So that's how now the glasses are processed and these various kind of glasses are used um, in actual construction industry. So laminated glass, now what are the properties of the laminated glass? So laminated glass is manufactured by sandwiching a layer of a plastic such as PVB in between two sheets of glass and this insulated layer makes the glass impact resistance and the salvage resistance. Laminated glass upon the breakage remains intact as a broken piece stick to the interlayer. Tempered glass is a glass of the toughened glass and is formed by heating anil glass in order to develop opposite stresses on its surface. And it makes this makes the toughened glass much stronger than the regular glass. So in the construction industry, you will see the use of a tempered glass or you will see the use of a laminated glass from the safety perspective. So, so the picture itself shows that when they are going to break, they are not going to make any sort of injuries wherever you are using them. So whether you are using them in the residential context or you are going to use them in the commercial places. So now the uses are defined uh, as per the application or the type of the building, the glasses are picked and uh, choices are being made. Now, very important aspect is a fire resistance glass. So what happens in case of the fire resistance glass? Now, these glasses are not much used in the facades. Uh, in a very strategic areas, it is used as a um, as an exterior material, but you can see them as maybe probably used for the data centers or maybe use them as a internal partitions or uh, they are some places used as a vision panel. So these are the glass, which is multi laminated glass and they are intumescence layer, which can withstand the extreme level of heat, smokes and the flames. So uh, based upon the National Building Code and the fire rating, uh, the thickness is, ranges from the 7 mm to 20 mm to 30 mm. Definitely, the cost will also go higher. When you are using this fire glass, the entire assembly would have the rating. So it's not just the glass who is going to perform, but each and every element of uh, this framework has to perform uh, with the fire resistance. So it's very important that the entire assembly needs to be tasted uh, when it is to be used as a fire resistance glass. Uh, smart glass. So smart glass is a type of a glass that switches its optical transmission properties due to the uh, passage of current and thus the glass can change from the transparent to translucent and vice versa. So more you can see the interior application where as per the usability, um, you can utilize this glass uh, in a particular fashion. Uh, they have certain spans where you can need, uh, you would need a structural members to support them or fit them or certain Hardwares are available where uh, by which you can use this glass. Retrofitting glass is a type of a glass which has a low E interlayer and is applied above the old windows in order to make them more energy efficient. So, so in case uh, in your energy simulation there is large amount of heat gain or uh, your visual light transmission is not appropriate, then, then you can think about this as a solution. So retrofitting can happen, uh, maybe it's a heritage structure or something like that, and there these kind of glass can be utilized. So these kind of options are also available. So what it shows that you classify the building, you understand the type of a building, and you can pick and choose this particular material. There are new trends, as I said, that in the past history, you could see uh, the kind of a stained glass, which is more ornamental. Now, uh, the glasses are coming uh, as a ceramic print or uh, dichroic glasses, which can have that kind of uh, ornamentation and new age technology where, where you can blend them into your architecture and use them uh, very wisely as per your design. So what is dichroic glass? Uh, this glass was originally created by adding a trace amount of gold and silver um, to large volume. The resulting medium partially reflects the glass passing through it and causing an observer to see a different colors depending on the direction of the light source. 
So this can be used by using the titanium, uh, zirconium, and vaporization kind of a technology. The vapor then condenses on the surface of the glass and it forms a crystal structure. And a protective layer of a quartz crystal is sometimes added and other variants of such vapor depositions or PVD coating can, PVD coating are also possible. So this is going to give you uh, some sort of a different effect on your, uh, in your uh, surfaces. Probably you can use them in the interiors. Probably you can use them in the exteriors. Uh, looking at overall application and uh, create very interesting features uh, to your buildings. Um, I'm just showing an image which which uh, making it look very interesting. So uh, use, usage of a dichroic glass in an office building. So uh, very playfulness, you can get it into your interior spaces and the last span. So uh, can be thought about this kind of material. Then you can see the ceramic fritting. Uh, as, I, as I said that uh, the ornamentation, now these ornamentation can be brought by creating a, a kind of a motive and that motive, ornamented motive can be utilized on the entire facade and uh, uh, by which you can uh, make it look uh, more uh, softer look can be brought. Um, back painted color glasses can be used. Any, any kind of a patterns can be created over the glass and uh, it makes it look more seamless, more interesting um, uh, in the new age technology. So ceramic fritting is one more option uh, by which uh, you can have a silk screen kind of a printing uh, to be done on the glass. So you can see that how versatile this material has become uh, from the past age, it's begin with the versatility, versatility and now uh, you can see even with the new age, uh, older trains of ornamentations are seen um, coming up uh, into the facades. Um, so properties of the glass, what are the properties of the glass? So first of all, everyone is going to say that the transparency, which allows the vision of outside world through it. Second is, as I mentioned, that the reflectivity of using it wisely to showcase the soul of uh, art. So reflection of a nature, of course, uh, one has to uh, control the reflection uh, because the heat island effect, which I'm going to talk about it. Uh, but the reflection is something which the sky reflecting into your facade of your high rises is something uh, which is the uh, characteristic of the glass and workability. It's a fluidity. Uh, glass can be molded into any shape. So uh, this image shows that it, it, it has that kind of a form. It has that kind of a sway uh, where glass is the only material which allows me to have that kind of a flexibility. There are various other materials, but glass gives me that kind of a, um, subtle reflection uh, into, into it. Harnessing, harnessing the energy of a sun. So we can integrate solar panels into it and really make it a use uh, into your energy conservation. So uh, how beautifully you use, how wisely use uh, your, your material with the new age technology, that kind of a benefit you can get with this material. So in short, very versatile material. But now the next step for us that to understand this material and then put them into proper kind of a framework and the implementation when they're blending with your actual structure and what happens there, that's what we need to understand. So what are the pros and cons? So it, it, it comes to the pros and cons of the material. So let's un first understand the pros of the material. So it's a lighter building material. That's why it is used uh, for the high rises. It blends with the exterior and interiors. Ease in installation, flexible building material, very strong material, it has its strength, uh, aids in urban monetization, of course, uh, it's a faster product, available, uh, very much possible, easily to implement, uh, to construct, and recyclable, of course, that's a very important aspect uh, in the today's uh, scenario that uh, whatever material we are recommended, uh, recommending, it has to have that kind of a recycle content uh, to make it more and more green. What are the cons? Glare, uh, if you don't choose the right kind of a glass or right percentage of a glass, then we have to face the glare. Heat island effect, as I said, that the reflecting too much of sun and uh, 
that disturbing uh, the surrounding development then the privacy uh, kind of a glass it more of reflecting same way you are going to get the reverse reaction at night so it could uh, impact your privacy safety parameters if uh, the recommendation is not done properly where the laminator needs to be used if you go with the tempered glass or the toughened glass then the safety could be the issue uh, impact needs to be understood maintenance if these materials are not maintained properly your facades are not maintained properly then it's going to create that kind of uh, non maintained uh, urban scenarios which are going to happen and the construction tolerances which is another issue what we see when we are actually implementing that could create some sort of a cracking or not having the even surfaces or leakages or these are the issues but the cons can be overcome if we try to resolve them on board and at the same time with your uh, construction team on site so so these can be resolved and this material can be made as a very versatile uh, material for our usage so how to implement this material uh, from my side i just want to add few points there i would say that the architecture shapes behavior so so uh, how you detail it out how, how would you design uh, once you understand uh, this material with its uh, characteristic with its chemical composition with with its uh, supporting hardware or the framework Uh, then you can really propose a right kind of a solution so i'm going to show you a few examples how it has been implemented to various kinds of buildings i'm just sharing few of uh, uh, my projects uh, which are high density and three different kind of a projects so first is a crescent bay parel which is a highly residential project and uh, there are 40, it's a 40 lakh square feet of a construction uh with uh, students plus five podium and then there are uh, around uh, five basements uh tower t1 is 41 tower t2 is 43 uh tower t3 is 47 tower t5 is 54 and t6 is 54 where the floor to floor height is 3.2 and for the last tower it's 3.6 um this is how overall uh, these the these six towers are connected together uh, by connecting bridges so this is how on the 20th floor these are all connected uh, together walkways where um, uh, at 20th floor the kind of a wind pressure is been studied and all the windows are designed uh, to that kind of a wind pressure they are sliding windows uh with the seamless dg panels and whichever other railings are all laminated glass so you can see the inside view that the railing is with the laminated uh, glass and the uh, uh, dg panels with the sliding um this is a picture taken on the 21st floor second project which i'm going to show you is the exactly uh, opposite that it's a residential project but what you saw in the previous project is with the larger decks and you have a sliding uh, panels uh, which are reinforced panel because the complete analysis was done of these sliding uh, windows and uh, during that analysis uh, the overall calculation was done for the thickness of the glass kind of uh, aluminum framing the reinforcement to be given to these aluminum framing at the same time for the decks the railing which were used they were laminated glass the appropriate thickness was analyzed with the a uh, wind engineering studies and the glass thicknesses were modified the kind of a hardware which was used are also modified to suit um, so you will see the thickness on the 28th floor and the thickness on the 56th floor may vary as per the wind uh, wind analysis so in certain places wherever uh, the wind pressure were, was much more there the glass thickness were modified in the overall uh, overall design this is a residential towers which are uh, in wadala icc towers which is almost 30 lakh square feet of a construction and uh, one icc one tower is 51 storied and icc two is a uh, 58 storied tower now this was the building where the complete unitized system was implemented as there were no decks um uh, the complete window system was the unitized system and this kind of a high rise that's the best solution 
So this is how these two towers are completed right now. So on the left hand side, you can see the completed picture and on the right hand side, it's a 3D view. These are the podium pictures along with the landscape uh, lobby uh, of uh, this uh, welfare center. Welfare center and the clubhouse uh, with the glass facade of the unitized system. These are all completed picture of the project handed over and occupied. This is a typical bedroom where you could see in the unitized system, what you can see is that there is a cross ventilation given, but the windows are push type as these were all uh, air conditioned apartment. You could see from the safety perspective, only 15 degrees of angle has been given and uh, all the other windows are having the aluminum framing and they are fixed windows. So these are all uh, single glazed unit. But while selecting the glass, uh, R in, R out, the U values, the VLT were all analyzed by the energy simulation and the right kind of glass were chosen. So this is how the unitized system where you're, uh, I'm going to show you the detail how the unitized systems working in the residential context. Uh, it's a wonderful solution where you, uh, it blends wonderfully while constructing. So when we are coming up with the, uh, with the newer uh, bylaws where there are no balconies or no decks, but for the high rises building where there's kind of a flat slab construction or the PP slab kind of technology, there these kind of a unitized system are the faster. In case of unitized system, there's a lot of work which is done offsite and that's why it uh, rapidly gives you uh, the results where, where you can really go fast uh, in your construction. Your tolerances can be looked into it properly. So this is what I would say the best solution for the high rises, whether it's a commercial or even the residential. So all these details can be well worked out and can be executed. So we got a wonderful results for this project, I must say. So this is the actual picture of uh, the sliding window, one of the project where uh, this is another option uh, where you have a fixed window at the railing height, which is almost like 1,300 uh, from the floor finish. And then you have a sliding panels um, where you can get the uh, breeze coming in and uh, you can slide them. Uh, you, you have to take care of the rain coming in. So, so uh, during the rainy season, if there are no chajjas, then uh, opening them at the 15 degrees from the safety security point of view also makes more sense. But these kind of options are available where you can think about the sliding windows above the railing height or the fixed window height. You can even have a push type. So, so there are options available like you can have uh, 15 degrees openness or you can, you can have uh, sliding or the push type. All these options are available. Uh, looking at the user inside, you can pick and choose any kind of technology. Uh, I'm going to take you through one uh, commercial project and the commercial project is going to square and the area is again almost 30 lakh square feet and it's a, it's a mixed use development with the commercial, residential, and the parking structure. So various different kinds of the blends of the system in the glass were used. Um, even the glasses were used as per the user. So you can see that the glass which is used for the commercial or the glass which has been used for the retail section or the glass which will be used for the residential, they have their own characteristic. They have their own new values and they have their own details because as per the user, the blends of the system are being made. We have tried to ensure that uh, the color combinations and uh, where there is a use of a spandrel and then there is a region, all those are uh, taken care of. So once I take you through the view galleries, I'll show it to you that how they are blended together. So this is what the commercial uh, retail section where you could see that uh, all of these are the structural glazing systems. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to um, take you through that. What is the difference between the structural glazing and curtain wall system also? We can see use of a glass canopies and they are blending into the structural glazing system. Minimal use of a hardware, more seamless kind of a glass. The reflection of the glass, you can see there is a minimal reflection and very subtle tinge of uh, the color because it's very important that you, if you use a color substrate, substrate, which is very close to the clear substrate, 
uh, from inside out, uh, you can get the better vision. And experience of a color outside or the nature colors can be experienced much better. So these are few completed picture. So you can see the blend of a glass. So here and here, you can see two different system of the glass. Where you can see the push type windows, uh, which are there. These are the openings which has been asked as per the NBC. There are fusible links or there are fire access panels too given in the facade as per the uh, chief fire officer NOC or uh, as required uh, from the ventilation point of view. So all these analysis are done when we are actually implementing our facade uh, strategies that which should be the push type, which should be openable type, which should be sliding type. So all those works are done before we finalize our facades. So these are few completed picture. These are few interior pictures where you can see that few of the surfaces of atrium are also uh, into the glass. This is an atrium glass, uh, inside glass, and you can see even the atrium is with the glass canopy. Um, filtering a lot of daylight into it and making this place uh, uh, with a lot of daylight and you can experience when you're waiting in the lobby um, that uh, very delightful uh, rejuvenating experience for the commercial places which is going to be extremely busy and overly populated in the next few days once we open this up. Few more pictures of the skylights. Use of laminated glass in the skylight. Swimming pool deck area. This is something which is a typical floor plate. You can see that the user is going to get a few of the openable panel and the unitized system in the exterior. So these are the unitized system which were fixed uh, to the bracket which was uh, given uh, on the slab. So windows or the facades is actually the rhythm of the architecture. That's actually your look and feel of your building. In the case of residential, what happens, what is very, very important that in commercial, you can see that, that, that there are uh, clear slavages. But in case of residential, you can see uh, a lot of offsets happening. And it's very important that while designing, architect needs to understand that you can have more straight lines uh, for the unitized system or the ventilated facades um, so that uh, you can reduce the cost and uh, you can... Uh, uh, look into the tolerances uh, uh, while construction is ongoing. So, so it's preferred that even in the residential, if you have more straighter lines, that's what I would recommend. Having a use of a deck is also very important in current scenario. We are all experiencing that staying at home, uh, whoever is having a deck, they are having a better experiences in the high rises because that gives us a better connect with the ground. And I think um, that's what is the new trend we are again going to see that we are going to have a smaller terraces or we are going to have a smaller decks along with our uh, unitized or uh, semi-unitized facades. So just a few examples where how it could be blended with your uh, architecture. Now, let me explain you a bit about the unitized and the semi-unitized system. So in case of uh, Semi-unitized system, the vertical manians and the horizontal transoms are installed on the bracket, which are anchored to the columns and the slab. So my diagrams are showing that how the anchoring happens. So cut to the size glass is structurally glazed to the aluminum subframe by the structural sealants, which are a very important part that the sealants uh, are important from the seepage point of view or, or uh, any kind of uh, water penetration within your facade point of view because there's a lot of wind pressure on your facade. So these sealants or, or the frames are the most important um, part in case of a glass facade. So we cannot just blame the glass facade, but the entire assembly works together as a team uh, when the execution is ongoing. In case of unitized system, the brackets are anchored to the columns and slab after the detailed survey. The complete unit spanning floor to floor height, fully fabricated at the factory is installed on the bracket. And 10 to 15% of the work is done offsite, which is, which is the blessing in today's scenario. So maximum uh, offsite work, uh, because many sites in this first class cities are very compact. So maximum work, what you can take off the sites really helps you to expedite the speed of the project. So it's very important to choose the right kind of a system for your facade. 
so this is overview which is uh, in the larger context explaining you the same concept what i just explained you a minute before um, there are few details which i am showing you that exactly how the bracketing is done um similar way that uh, in the semi unitized system you can have a sliding panel so you can have a push type you can have a sliding one thing uh, one thing which is very important is either you should have a railing inside if you are starting a window from the slab level or you must have the fixed glazing and the sliding or a push type from the um old people or the small children or uh, maybe people you have who are having a vertical point of view so that's how your overall building design uh, is been considered there are double skin facade now double skin facades are used where there is a solar heat gain or or uh, air flow point of view or from the daylight point of view where you can have some sort of a screen happening inside and and you can stop that kind of a heat gain gain uh, coming inside so reduction on the reliance of uh, size of the mechanical system so this actually helps you uh, in reducing cutting down your heat load on your hvac system uh, it's bit of expensive um, so uh, though it is very useful but uh, definitely the developer will look at the overall cost but strategically uh, in some places uh definitely this is a very good system if we can go with a double skin kind of a facade system these are few pictures where uh, you can understand that how the double skin facades can be utilized they look very interesting uh with that kind of a louver and a glass outside um, but uh, this technology slowly and steadily will be utilized in our condition more it is used in the european countries than uh, than in our context right now um but very useful so let me come to a um, um, typical question that what's the difference between the structural and the curtain wall so i'll i'll take you through this very quickly it is a now let me come to the structural glazing system it's a system of binding glass to a building structural framing members utilizing a high strength high performance silicon sealant specifically designed and tested for the structural glazing in structural glazing application dynamic wind loads are transferred from the glass by the structural silicon sealant to the perimeter structural support now what happens in case of a curtain wall wall which encloses the space within the building but does not support the roof since the curtain wall is non structural so that's a basic difference and it can be made of a lightweight material so the cost is less so that is another uh, advantage of curtain wall to the structural glazing of course it it depends upon the quantum it depends upon the application so so this is just a basic statement where uh, right now the curtain wall is cheaper when the glass is used in the curtain wall an advantage that it's a uh, it's it's cheaper so so many a places this curtain wall system is adopted or adapted but as i said that structural glazing is more stronger uh, so the higher heights wherever there is glass as a used as a strong material or uh, as a structural element or as a uh, as a skin uh, always it is recommended to use the structural glazing ventilated facade so uh, you can have a blend of the various kind of a skin which are available in the market which which gives you a different kind of architecture so you can have a perfect blend you can think about a institutional project or the health care project or even the residential project having this kind of a blend where the ventilation is because of some sort of a section of the dry cladding uh, it gives you certain amount of uh, insulation and you can cut down the uh, great amount of a uh, heat gain uh, from your facade because definitely the glass adds to the heat uh, of course we are using with uh, the coatings we are we are studying the u values we are looking at the vlt Uh, all those things are studied when when the glass is finalized but if you have a perfect combination of the cladding material it is going to uh, help you in the entire energy conservation of the building so definitely architect as an architect you always give it a thought that what kind of a design or what what direction facade should have this kind of a ventilated facade so not necessary that entire building is been uh, completed in glass but you can have a strategic um facade after an energy simulation to have this kind of a blend of various skins which are available in the market 
Uh, I'm just going to take you through the skylights because glasses are used even for the skylights. So you can have a smaller skylight with a low maintenance. Uh, wherever there are horizontal surfaces like a canopy or uh, you are having the pergolas or you are having some sort of a skylights, always the recommendation is uh, a laminated glass because if the laminated glasses are not used, then there could be uh, some sort of injury. So always it is recommended to use the laminated glass. You can have a solar controlling glass uh, looking at the overall uh, the climate. So especially in the tropical climate, when you are using them on the horizontal surface, the heat needs to be looked into it. Otherwise, there is a lot of heat gain and that directly impacts to your HVAC system. So that balance needs to be uh, taken care of. Privacy glazing and the acoustic glazing. So acoustics also plays a very important role. Uh, in that case, laminated glass also uh, in certain areas gives the property of the acoustics. DGU gives you that kind of uh, acoustics. And even the triple glazing also gives you that kind of acoustics. So triple glazing again is having the gaps like a DGU, uh, but it's sandwiched with the three glasses and having the gap of 18 mm or 20 mm based upon the kind of acoustic property you want to achieve. Few just pictures of the skylight. So it's a blend of a steel, aluminum, and the right kind of a hardware which has been used for the uh, skylights. Some wonderful designs, kind of a shapes, which are so, so uh, showing the versatility of the material. Um, you can have the uh, geodesic domes which are designed in the glass. Few of the glass canopies, frameless design of a glass. So it's like a love story of using the glass. Uh, it could be blended in so many ways. Uh, one more uh, element, if you're going with the bungalows or you're going with the sky villas, uh, there are seamless or the frameless kind of windows which are available where you have a minimal uh, use of the aluminum framing and you have a smoother operations of the glass uh, which uh, showing few pictures. So, so this can be utilized. Of course, uh, these are pretty expensive, but um, these kind of exclusive glasses can also be used. You can see it, it gives you a lot of openness and the minimum uh, aluminum section. So, uh, I would just like to quote here that the sun does not realize how wonderful it is until after a room is made. So that's what uh, Mr. Lothan has said and that's what I would like to see with the glass. Sliding windows or you can have windows with a weather panel. So, so if there is a lot of glare, you can think about that as an external skin too. So it's just like caressing your glass facade with some kind of other material where you are going to cut down your heat. So it's just the implementation of the facade strategy. So, so how uh, as, a, uh, as a designer architect, uh, architect can think uh, versatile that keeping my glass facade as a versatile material, but I can come up with some sort of a solution where I'm blending the glass and I'm blending some sort of a weather panel into my facade. Glass railing, very important. So I mentioned to you that uh, what kind of a height of a glass is uh, necessary uh, as per the standards. And uh, you can make them with the seamless sections and uh, you can have more and more visibility, but at the same time, make it more safe. But the glass is the option what we are seeing everywhere. Glass blocks is another very versatile material. And uh, uh, we have seen that into more of an interior application and in some places, even in the exterior facade, uh, it's blending very well for some sort of a low rise institute building and adding to the courtyard is adding some sort of a warmth. So we can think about that as a material, too. very versatile material. Um, this is just a slide. I'm not going to take much of a time. All of us are aware about the DGO glass, its thermal properties. Um, so inner glass is a clear glass and outer is a performance glass and inside the cavity is giving you those kind of a thermal properties, which is very important. Uh, you can have a triple glazing. You can have an argon filled glass to get uh, desired property. So all these glass selections are done after the energy simulation has been carried out. So as an architect, uh, once 
uh, the concept sketches are been done. We we run through the ecotech model. We understand that our, how our building is performing, and then we try to modulate uh, the choice of a glass or the selection of a glass. Of course, while selecting the cost, the constructability, the kind of a hardware, heat gain through the various element of uh, the framework, I looked into it. Protection to the glass, so so kind of uh, weather panels, the chajas or kind of uh, screens, what you can provide to a glass, that's the best kind of architecture that your glass is protected and you're reducing your heat gain. Um, these are few details where SGU, uh, how uh, SGU is uh, detailed out in the plan and integration with the aluminum sections. Various kind of aluminum, aluminum sections are available. Aluminum sections are also designed based upon the height uh, based upon the application, based upon the span of the glass, uh, horizontal as well as vertical, wind pressure, all these analyses are done along with the facade consultants. And then the glass thicknesses are also worked around along with the cost and then they are finalized. This is DGU section where, where again, uh, looking at the overall simulation, some places the DGU are proposed, some places even the SGUs are proposed. You can see typically in case of a window or in the Maiwan, we always look at how the window seal will be worked out. So these are the joints where the seepage can happen through the window. Rather than blaming the windows, all these elements are uh, actually incorporated within the Maiwan shuttering. So window fixing becomes easier. So where the construction of these glass windows can become much more easier. Various kinds of hardware are available in the market with the various kinds of uh, 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 pricing and the whole assembly costing has been worked out uh, and based upon that the hardwares are chosen for the exterior as well as for the interior. Uh, in case of a fire uh, we need to close down all the areas from where the fire or the smoke can go through. So there are typical smoke seal details have been created and I'm sharing few of those details with you where uh, very carefully we work on the smoke seal details where there are seamless facade and all the junctions where the smoke and fire could enter are properly taken care. They are tested uh, before uh, handing over of the premises. So all those care needs to be taken when you have uh, glasses of facade because as we studied there, there are pros as well as cons with these glass facades. There are in commercial few openings are just 15 degrees and that time we have to um, take care of uh, heat because whatever we are proposing proposing as a you know, tempered glass is not uh, the heat strength in glass. So then they are going to behave in a various different ways and which could cause an injury. So from the safety perspective, these smoke seal details are very, very important. Next part is a sealant. So all these facades needs to be sealed with the sealant, uh, I'm just showing uh, some sort of a detail where the sealants needs to be taken care. We take care of a detail because many a times the birds eat away those sealants. So how to hide those sealants? So where the architectural detailing becomes very, very important that your facade is not vulnerable for such kind of uh, uh, problems and those are maintained properly or they're replaced uh, time to time. Uh, fire resistance, as, as I, I think I explained most of uh, when, when I express you the fire resistance glass. So it's a multi laminated glass and as per uh, the uh, fire rating, you're supposed to propose this glass. Uh, coating on the glasses are soft coat and hard coat glass, which is the uh, important part uh, from the heat gain and from the HVAC perspective. So one has to be extremely careful while uh, choosing the glass. Uh, you have to understand uh, its behavior, its pattern, the kind of a heat gain. So low E solar coating glass or uh, heat reflective glass are chosen, but you have to, one has to be very careful about the heat island effect. Hard coat glasses are the exterior solar control glass. There are mirror or the racker glass. So there is wide range of uh, glass is available. But after running the simulation, which are also run by these uh, various glass agencies, so you can work together with uh, 
your uh, you can work together with various people and uh, uh, get uh, those things uh, simulated or uh, get those things done and the choice of class can be made uh, soft core glass are the high performance glasses uh, the heat uh, reflective glasses are the high performance glasses and uh, which has an advanced solar control technology a uh, hard coat uh, the exterior solar control glass there are mirror glass and lacquer glass so uh, i am not going to take much of a time on this you can uh, refer to this presentation and understand uh, um, this particular uh, coating various coatings on the glass so what's important is the maintenance of a glass facade is extremely important and uh, when these uh, glass facades are maintained that time uh, all the kind of uh, maintenance needs to be looked into it so plan and uh, prevention of uh, prevention in the maintenance and the plan maintenance is a cost effective uh, a way uh, of maintaining the warranties of the uh, prolong prolonging the life of your facade and preventive maintenance remedial and reactive maintenance the glass facade can provide a rapid cost effective response services for the mechanical issues quality issues water egresses so all these are available uh, kind of a technologies so uh, as an architect or uh, while the construction are ongoing the facility management team uh, looks into all these nitty gritties and understand that how this facade needs to be maintained so as an architect it's it's very important for us to understand that what happens to our design once we uh, go into the cycle of 5 years or 10 years uh, for the longevity that's very important for us to understand actual behavior after this particular premise is handed over and all the details are worked out for the proper maintenance of these high rises facade which is which is very important for the glass facade so let me come to the final chapter which is the future of glass uh, as we all understand it's a very versatile material uh, there are new trends coming into it uh, one has to understand the detail one has to understand the application one has to understand the usability and while studying carefully studying of all the aspect of sustainability uh, the properties of glass carefully we can choose the glass along with that the frame along with the hardware and of course the cost and the construction tolerances we can come to the final solution but what is the future of glass there are few new trends coming into the glass so i just want to take you through them so what is called as a media facade so what is a media facade so media facades are the layer of individually controlled lights attached or even woven into the exterior surface of a building to function as a dynamic palette for the text graphics and video animation when design media facade opportunities to push the boundaries are my read encouraging lighting designers and architects to embrace the new language and explore the use of light and media as a facade material to form an integral part of architectural vision is extremely vibrant interactive and creative so it's absolutely new age uh, new age and as i said vibrant and uh, for the younger generation uh, something to celebrate so harnessing the solar energy you can integrate your solar panels so this is a future of glass because uh, this is something which is amply available to us how we are integrating into our facade and how we are integrating in our buildings are very important um recycling is is very important so whatever material whatever material other than glass whatever material uh, we really need to understand the recycled content of that material so i'm going to close down today's my presentation it was a very long presentation and i tried level best from my side uh, to understand while going through this presentation uh, i could do a lot of research i'm sure you are must be having so many questions so uh, i'm going to open this discussion for the questions so before leaving you all uh, with my presentation i just want to leave uh, with one quote from architect zahadi that there are 360 degrees so why stick to one so this is what i would like to say that it's a clear solution it's a best material but at the same time 
one has to be very sure, very confident, and very much updated with the new age technology and embrace this fantastic material. So thank you to you all. Thank you for your all the patience and time. Once again, let me say that stay safe and stay at home. Thank you. Thank you so much.